Hi, what's up everybody? It's Patrick. Today I'm going to talk about in my fifth video of expressions, random numbers and how we can use that in our expressions. So um, in a mel tab, um, because mel and expressions are virtually the same thing, I'll just do a random 5. So if I do random 5, it will give me a number from 0 to 5. So if I run it a couple of times, you'll see that gives me a number ranging from 0 to whatever number I put it inside. Um, what I usually do is uh, do a number from 0 to 1. Okay, So it gives me decimal points uh, from 0 to 1. The thing about computers and how they process numbers are uh, that random numbers are not random at all. With Maya, we want uh, with any computer graphics, if I decide to close my scene and open my scene again, uh, I might not get a repeated random behavior. Uh, there is a way that I prefer to work that can repeat this random behavior, and it involves giving the random number generator a seed. So, um, if I do a one three two as a as a seed. And then I run my random number function. So it's 0 0.64, 0 0.68, and 0 0.65. Uh, if I run my seed again, and then I'll run my random function three times again, you'll see that it's 0 0.64, 0 0.68, 0 0.65. So we get random numbers but repeated in the same fashion. So in this way, we can make our values repeatable uh, just the way we want it and not a guessing game every time we load up the scene we don't know what we're gonna get okay let's use that in our expressions so we get a cube and expression editor and five if, it, if I create that uh, you'll see that from 0, 0 to 5 units um, and every time I update that expression it's going to very randomly give me my starting frame at 1 so if we take note of where it is now at 1 which is 0.58 um, so I go through my timeline so every frame it, this evaluates uh, and then when I decide to rewind and go back to frame 1 it's no longer 0 0.58, it's 0 0.991. If I decide to keep rewinding, this cube is not going to start at exactly where it was. Okay, so there's no repeatability and it's uh, inconsistent. So uh, the way I, I prefer to work would be having a 0 to 1.0 with the decimal uh, floating points and multiply by 5. Add it. Uh, running through that, it also gives me values from 0 to 5 units, which is exactly the same as random 5. If you're used to, you have some experience in Python programming, uh, this would exactly be how Python uh, does it as well. So 0 to 1 is normalized, so uh, it gives me a normalized random number and then, and then I multiply it by 5. To get our predictable random number, so we'll just do a C uh, 2, 3, 4, 2, 5, for example. So I'm going to update that, and now uh, you see, um, regardless how many times I update it, it always gives me that first number as 2.685. So then now when I uh, step through the frames, Nothing happens because um, in every frame it reinitializes and gives me that first number from after reinitializing this. So we don't want this reinitializing to happen every frame or else uh, it'll just be stuck where it is always giving us that first number in the random stream. So what we want to do is um, do a test for that first frame in our animation. Uh, if this frame is the first frame, let's do the initialize uh, with the seed and then for every subsequent frame just 
give me a random stream from the next random number without running this seed. So uh, if frame equals to one, and then we run this seed. Okay, so add it, and then first frame doesn't change. And when we step through, we get random numbers from zero to five. When we rewind through, we get our zero point. Uh, 2.68 and then if we take note of the next three numbers for example 68 then uh, 0 0.54 1.7 so if we rewind that 2.68 0 0.54 1.7 uh, which is exactly predictable so if I didn't like the the way it um, it goes to left to right first uh, I can always now go back to change my seat number after I edit it, you'll see it's 2.5, 4.3, and 1.2. So that's different now. So we can have something different uh, if we don't like it by changing the seed. At the same time, um, it is repeatable and it is predictable. Now I'm going to build a setup from how this random feature could be used in our work so um, this could be a setup for maybe uh, some kind of meter have having a needle in a from some kind of equipment that points to the cube. So um, using a aim constraint, I can point this needle to point at the cube, right? So do that. It's an aim constraint. And using our aim constraint, we can make this arrow always point at the cube. Uh, and this is blue arrow in the negative direction so it's the negative z axis so that one and one and apply okay so now wherever the position of this cube our indicator is always pointing at where the cube is if our indicator is in the origin and the cube is always to the right side uh, the next thing we would actually expect would be that the needle has a range of values from negative to positive if we want our cube to go from negative 5 to positive 5 uh, this is what we would do so while it the random numbers generating the range of 0 to 1 we actually want it to be z negative one to one, right? So usually I would do a do minus subtract zero point five. So that shifts uh, the original value from zero to one. If I shift everything by half, my values would be negative point five to positive point five. I would then uh, using a bracket to prioritize that operation and then I'll do a times 2 so and then bracket that up again so 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 so we we double that so it becomes 0 negative 1 to positive 1 and then we multiply it by 5 so negative 1 and you multiply it by 5 becomes a negative 5 and then positive 5 so after that uh, let's update this and you can see that um, our values now range from it's a positive five to negative five. So if you think that's that's too much, we can go now. Just need to change this, update that. So now our amount is negative two to positive two. That's one way that you can use uh, your random numbers. Um, for me, and in many situations you run into, you realize that um, 
random numbers jump too much and it's too jarring especially at huge magnitudes so if even I just go to five squares you see it's it's not smoothly transiting from one value to the next so it's really jumping all over the place um, in the next series of uh, videos I'll show other signal uh, types that you can do uh, that we can implement in our expressions and where they transit smoothly from one value to the next uh, I'll see you next time um, if you have any comments or you, you just want to let me know what you're currently doing with expressions and the difficulties that you're facing uh, you just leave a comment okay see you next time